Good morning, guys. How are you? So we're changing into what will wind up being our last chapter of the year, I'm fairly certain. And we're going to talk about polynomials. Before we do, we need to make sure that you're okay with your basic exponent rules. So on the first problem, 6 to the third means 6 times 6 times 6. And that equals 216. Okay? So I want you to just know the vocabulary that the base of this um, exponential problem is 6 and the exponent is 3. Now, the next two people sometimes get mixed up because of where the negative is. Negative 8 in parentheses squared means negative 8 times negative 8. And as you know, a negative times a negative turns out to be positive. So the base in this case is negative 8. You don't have to put the parentheses around it, but I want to emphasize that they're there. And the exponent is 2. But when you look at the next problem, this means negative, and then it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, where you use 2 as the base 6 times, okay? So, the negative is not in parentheses, so it is not actually part of what's raised to the exponent of 6. So, 2 to the 6 is 64, and then you multiply that by a negative, okay? So, or, or raising exponents to um, powers is also easy. This just means do 5 thirds times 5 thirds. times 5 thirds times 5 thirds. Now, you can look at it, at it as just saying do 5 to the 4th and then do 3 to the 4th separately. So what is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5? If you look at your calculator, you'll see that it's 625 if you didn't already know that. And what is 3 times 3? 9. And 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 9 times 9, or 81. That one you probably could do in your head, okay? So if I say, well, what does x to the fifth mean? It doesn't matter that our base has changed to a letter. We're still going to say the base is x and the exponent's 5, or the power is 5. That just means that you're going to multiply x by itself five times in a row. So what does x to the 0 mean? 1. And that's a little unusual, and I'll explain it more for you in just a little while when we get into division. But anything, it doesn't matter how complicated it is, anything raised to the 0 power automatically goes to 1. And again, later in the video, I'll, I'll mention why that is. Now, what about negative exponents? Guys, look at this as x to the negative third over 1. If you want to cure a negative exponent, which we don't like leaving in our answers, if it's on the top of the fraction, drop it to the bottom of the fraction. If it's on the bottom of the fraction, lift it to the top of the fraction. So here, you don't want the x to the negative fifth on the bottom of the fraction. So make the x to the fifth go to the top of the fraction, leaving just a 1 on the bottom. So 4x to the fifth. And that 4, you can just ignore because it's not doing anything. Now, when you look at the x over y to the negative 2, you can look at it as x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 2. And then I don't want the negative 2 with either the x or the y. So the x to the 2 goes to the bottom, so I won't have a negative exponent. And the y to the 2 goes to the top, so I won't have a negative exponent. Another way you could start to look at this is if you have a whole fraction raised to a negative, you can flip the whole fraction and raise it to the positive, and then you've got the top to the 2 power and the bottom to the 2 power, which gives us the exact same answer. So a lot of these problems, there's a lot of orders you can do them in, and you'll always wind up at the same final answer. Now, on this first problem, when we start to multiply, this is if our bases are identical. All right, x squared, remember, means x times x. And then you've got times 
x to the seventh means x times x times x times x, five, six, seven. Well, if you count those, I'm saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, well, if I multiply x by itself nine times, that's x to the ninth. So do you remember when your bases are alike and you're multiplying, you're really just adding the exponents. So I could have said x to the 2 times x to the 7 is x to the 2 plus 7. And that would be the x to the ninth. That's probably the way that most of you would do it from now on. I just wanted to remind you. Now, in the next problem, our base is 3x plus 4. Oh, I just realized that I made a mistake when I typed this in. Let me fix this because they're supposed to both be, um, both be the same. And I just now realized that I didn't make them both the same. Change it on your skeleton notes, too. I meant to make them the same and just didn't. Sorry about that, guys. So on this one, you're going to say, oh, well, okay. Since they're both the same, then all you do is add the exponents. 4 plus 6 is 10, and you don't do anything else. Okay, the next one's the same too, okay? A lot of people, when they do numbers, they'll go, oh, well, go ahead and say 2 times 2 is 4 and add the exponents. No, 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 no. That's wrong, okay? You don't change the rule just because the base changes. So you're going to say the 2's are the same base, so all you do when you're multiplying is add exponents and stop. Now, 2 to the 7th, if it asks you to go ahead and evaluate it, you can get that answer 128 for that, but what they're wanting is 2 to the 7th. Now, the same thing is true here. I would not change the negative exponent yet, because if you say, well, let me just add the exponents, 6 plus a negative 4 is 2, and the negative exponent is taken care of anyway, so I wouldn't overdo it with your negative exponent in this case. Now, 3 squared, I believe, is what they're wanting actually online. But if they say then evaluate, that's the key word, then go ahead and go to 9. Because you know 3 times 3 is 9. <clears throat> now on your negative exponents, you are going to do something about it. But I would say wait and go ahead and say negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. Now deal with it. So remember, that's 5 to the negative 2 over 1. So make it 1 over 5 to the negative, or 5 to the positive 2. Take care of your negative exponent by dropping it to the bottom. And there, um, you're probably done at this point because most of the homework that you're going to be working with just wants you to deal with the exponent part. But see, now that I've multiplied it out, like I maybe didn't know that 5 to the 8, what 5 to the 8th was, but when I deal with the exponents, the answer becomes something I can do in my head without a calculator. So one last problem. The bases are alike. They're x. You're multiplying, so all you do is add exponents. And m plus 5 is as good as I can do. They're not like terms, so I can't add beyond that. But I did take it from two exponentials to one exponential, so I made the problem shorter. That means I simplified. Now, if the bases are not alike, there's nothing fancy you can do, guys. So with a to the fourth times b to the fifth, and here I really do mean the bases to be different, there's nothing you can do, okay? Um, just put it together, a to the fourth, b to the fifth, there's nothing fancy. So especially here, this is wrong, okay? Because somebody has tried somehow or another to multiply the bases, two times three and get six, and add exponents and get five, that is wrong, 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 wrong. You can't do anything fancy. Instead, you just have to say, well, 2 cubed just means 2 times 2 times 2. And 3 squared means 3 times 3. And just multiply those out. There's nothing else you can do. So I see that 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9. The answer is 72, but there's no exponent rule going on here. This is just a, a straightforward work the problem out. So, for instance, if you were had a plug and chug problem and it said um, evaluate 
a cubed b squared if a is 2 and b is 3. This is what I call a plug and chug problem because you just plug in and you go. That's what you just did. Okay? You just said, well, if a is 2, then I've got 2 cubed. And if b is 3, I've got 3 squared. And you just worked it out. Okay? So there's nothing fancy to those problems. It's just a straightforward, like an Algebra 1 kind of level problem. Now, we are going to divide. So if your bases are alike and you're dividing, all you do is subtract exponents. So look at this first problem. x to the 10th would be x, 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 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? Over x to the 4th would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, what I can do is say these four x's divide out with these four x's. And then what you've got left, if I count, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I would know that was x to the 6th. Now, that's really what's going on. But a lot of you hopefully will remember what you can do is say, oh, well, x to the 10th and x to the 4th, since my bases are alike and I'm dividing, you subtract to where the exponent's bigger. So I'm going to subtract it to the top, and I get x to the 6th, okay? Now, on this next problem with 3x plus 1, here I actually made them the like like I meant to. The bases are both 3x plus 1, but the exponent's bigger on the bottom. So what you're going to do is take the 3x plus 1 off the bottom and say 23 minus 10. Take it to the bottom. So your answer is 1 over 3x plus 1 to the 13th on the bottom. And then you just stop. There's nothing else you could do because 3x plus 1 to the 13th would take you forever to work out. It's a huge problem. Um, so... Again, on this next problem, the 4 to the 19th over 4 to the 17th, sometimes people get crazy and think, well, do 4 divided by 4 and get 1, and then do 19 minus 17 and get 2. No, no, mm -mm, that's wrong, okay? These people are doing too much. The bases are alike, 4 and 4, so leave the base alone. The 19 on top is bigger, so subtract 19 minus 17 to the top and leave a 1 on bottom. So it's just 4 squared, which is 16. But my guess is the 4 squared, again, is what they're wanting on your homework. So on the last problem, it's the same idea. The x to the 2n plus 3 over x to the n plus 1. Your bases are alike, so subtract. I'm going to say 2n plus 3 is bigger than n plus 1. So I'm going to subtract to the top. So I'm going to say 2n plus 3 minus all of n plus 1. Be careful there. So that's going to give me 2n plus 3 minus m minus 1 when I, said, uh, when I distribute the negative 1. So I'm going to get 2n minus m is 1m, and 3 minus 1 is plus 2. And again, there's your answer. Now, I told you earlier that I would explain to you why anything to the zero power is e or, uh, equal to 1. Consider this. You all know that like x, or um, I'll use a different letter. You all know that a over a is 1, right? And you all also know that b to the fifth over b to the fifth is 1. You all know that those would reduce down to 1. So think about it. On the b to the 5th over b to the 5th, if you say, well, let me make it 5 minus 5 on top, it's still got to be 1. Well, 5 minus 5 is 0. So you're getting that b to the 0 is 1. So that's why we have to describe things to the 0 power as being 1. So we kind of make that definition, and then everybody rolls with it. All right, so power to a power. If you look at the next problem, x to the 4th to the 3rd means x to the 4th.
times x to the fourth times x to the fourth because you're going to write it out three times in a row. Well, guys, you already know that if you're going to multiply like bases, just add exponents. So 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. Oh, look at the original problem. You had the 4 to the third, and it wound up being x to the twelfth. Now I can say that x to the fourth to the third means to multiply the exponents. 4 times 3 is 12. So that will probably be faster. So x to the fourth to the third means x to the twelfth. Now, so what does 2 to the third to the fourth mean? Well, again, leave the base alone. Just multiply the exponents, and 3 times 4 is 12. And 2 to the twelfth, now that's a large number. I'm using my calculator and getting 4,096 for that. All right, so what is 5 to the a to the b? Leave the base alone and simply say, what is a times b? a, b. That's as good as we write it. So same thing on the next one. Multiply the exponents. 2m times 3m is 6m squared, and you're done. Okay, now this next one's going to be a little bit harder because I'll leave the base alone, but I've got to say m plus n times n minus n, which means I have to do FOIL method. So first is m squared. Outer is minus m n. Inner is plus m n. And last is minus n squared. So I see that the plus m n minus m n cancels. So the final answer is a to the m squared minus n squared. Now, that's a little bit, that's a, that's a pretty big problem there. And most of your problems on the homework are a little more straightforward than that. So your problems on the homework are going to look some like what we've already done, where you have simple one rule at a time problems. But now we've got problems where you're going to put all the ideas together. So on these guys, and I'm not going to do this every time, but you basically turn this into a 12 times 5 problem, an x to the 16th times x to the 4th problem, and then a y times y to the fourth problem. So you make it three different problems in the way that you actually think through it, where 12 times 5 is 60. x to the 16th times x to the fourth add exponents is x to the 20th. y to the first times y to the fourth is y to the fifth when you add exponents. Okay, pretty all right. Now on this next problem, you're saying negative 6a cubed b to the negative fifth times negative 6a cubed b to the negative fifth. So you can write it out that way. You could also think of it as um, when you raise a whole, a whole inside term to an outside exponent, you could say, well, it's negative 6 squared. It's a cubed squared. And it's b to the negative fifth squared. Now, a lot of times you may not write this step out, but that's the way you would break it down and think about it. So that negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. a cubed to the uh, second is a to the 3 times 2 is 6. b to the negative 5th to the second is b to the negative 10th because negative 5 times 2 is 10, negative 10. Then, guys, what you've got to do is say, oh, I'm not supposed to leave any negative exponents in my answer. So drop it to the bottom as b to the positive tenth. Okay. Now, on this next one, again, the way you think about it and what you write are two different things. I would need to think about it as 81 over 27 is one problem. e to the twelfth over e to the negative 2 is another problem and z to the 5th over z to the 8th as another problem, okay? So you don't probably write that step actually, but you think about the problem in pieces that way. So there's two different ways. The, all this is easy except for the middle one, and I'll show you two different ways to do it. But on the first one, you need to reduce 81 over 27. 9 goes in, well, 81 over 27 is 3. I'm not going to make that too hard, so it's just 3 over 1. Now, on the middle term, what might be easier for you 
I'm going to put that back where I meant to write it, is to make it e to the 12th and maybe move the e to the second up to the top so that you don't have a negative exponent. Sometimes that's easier for people. On the third term, z to the 8 is bigger, so subtract 8 minus 5 to the third um, to the bottom. Then I can say, okay, so that's 3, e to the 12th, e to the second, add exponents over z cubed. I didn't really put that 3 out there. That's the computer being lovely. There we go. Now, another way to do, by the way, the e to the 12th over to e to the negative 2 is just to subtract. And you could say 12 is bigger, so subtract a negative 2 from the bottom. So that would be e to the 12th plus 2. And that would also give you the e to the 14th that we got. So I will show you on a lot of these moving the letters so that the exponents are positive because I think it's a little easier to not make goofball errors. But there's actually more than one way to do these. Guys, on, on this next one, it's just an add all the exponents because you're multiplying like bases. So I'm going to say m plus n plus 2m minus n. Oh, good, the n's cancel. So it's a to the 1m plus 2m is 3m. So that one looks worse than it is. All right, so on this one, there's all kinds of ways to do it. But I could look at this part as being x to the 2 to the negative 1 and then y to the 2 to the negative 1. And then this part will be x to the 2 to the negative 1 times y to the negative 2 to the negative 1. And then the third part becomes x to the negative 2 to the second and y to the negative 1 to the second. Now, this is one of multiple ways to do the problem, but since we're not together especially, I feel like this might be the easiest way for you to do it without making goofy errors. So, here I've got to say 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. On the y part, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. On the next x part, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, because remember, power to a power means multiply your exponents. Now, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Yay, a positive exponent. Negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. And negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So what I'm going to do is instead of taking care of all of those, let me go ahead and say for my x's, if I add my exponents, negative 2 plus negative 2 plus negative 4 adds up to negative 8. And then for my y's, I'm going to have negative 2 plus positive 2 is 0. 0 plus a negative 2 is negative 2. So now let me only take care of my negative exponents once at the end. So I'm going to make the x to the 8th drop to the bottom and the y to the 2nd also drop to the bottom. And now I'm done. Okay, so there are different ways to do them, do the problem, but let's go with that for right now, okay? Now, on this next problem, don't worry about the big time sign in the middle. What I can do is say, I'm just going to have, I'm going to multiply straight across the top. So I'm going to have negative 12 times 21. That's too large for me to do, so I'm just going to, without a calculator, so I'm going to leave it alone. So straight across the top. The x's are x cubed times x to the negative fifth is x to the negative second when I add exponents. y to the negative fourth times y to the negative eighth is y to the negative twelfth when I add exponents. So my goal usually is if I have separate fractions multiplied is to go ahead and get one big old fraction and then just keep, treat it like the other problems we've done. Straight across the bottom, 7 times 4 is, you know what, I'm going to leave it 7 times 4. And I'll show you why in a minute. And then I have x to the 4th, y to the negative 2. Now look at what I'm going to do. The reason I didn't multiply things out is, look, I can say 7 goes into 21 three times. And I can also say that 4 goes into negative 12 negative three times. So now I know my number part is just a negative 9 on top. 
and that way I didn't ever have to have huge numbers and get into exponents. Now on the x's, x to the fourth on bottom I like, but this x to the negative 2 on top I don't, so I'm going to drop it to x to the positive 2 on the bottom. The computer's not writing where I want it to write. Now, same thing, I notice on the y to the negative 12, let me move it to the bottom. And on the y to the negative 2, let me move it to the top. Now that just feels like an easier problem to me. So the negative 9 is going to stay. Now when you do the x to the 4th times x to the 2nd, uh, you're going to get x to the 6th on the bottom. Now when you look at the y to the 2nd over y to the 12th, the y to the 12th is bigger, so subtract to the bottom. 12 minus 2 is 10. And what I might want to do is, is say, well, that would look better if I wrote it like this. But it doesn't change the problem. It just makes it look better. Okay. All right. So we got a couple, couple final problems here. So I'm giving you one that looks bad, but it's not actually so bad. So take a look at this, guys. This part right here is just a power to a power. So that is 3x minus 10 to the 20th power. Well, this is the same idea. It's just a 3x minus 10 to the negative 2 to the 10th. So power to a power means multiply your exponents. Oh, now look at that. Now you've got like bases, so the base stays the same, and you simply add exponents because it's a multiply problem. Well, 20 plus a negative 20 is 0, and you know anything to the 0 is 1. So this one's bark looked worse than its bite because it wasn't as hard as it looked. Last but not least, if you do an application, don't, um, don't freeze up. These aren't bad. Do you remember that if you want to find volume, you do length times width times height when you're working with any kind of a prism? Okay, so I can say, well, the volume is going to be a length. We'll say the length is a to the third b. The width, we'll say, is 3ab. And the height, we'll say, is ab squared. It doesn't really matter which one you call length, which one you call width, and which one you call height, as long as you know multiply all three of them. So I see and understood 1 times 3 times 1. So the number part's just 3. a cubed times a to the first is a to the fourth times a is a to the fifth. And then b to the first times b to the first is b squared times another b squared is b to the fourth. All right, guys, you've got my math lab um, for today's date, which just reviews what we've done. Happy Monday.